Hi, I'm Shauna, this is Shauna's World. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I make videos about living intentionally. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Shauna's World. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite adventure memoirs. This list is not in any way exhaustive because there are so many out there and obviously I've only read a limited number and this is just a fraction of the ones I've read and some of the ones that have spoken to me the most. Adventure memoirs is one of my favourite genres. I like being a bit of an armchair adventurer and being inspired for what my next adventure might be. But I also just love hearing about people who've done incredible things, particularly people who've overcome adversity to be there. Wild by Cheryl Strayed. So the first book I'm going to share that I absolutely adored and it's one of the most well-known adventure memoirs out there is Wild by Cheryl Strayed. This is a really popular book and you might, if you haven't read the book, have seen the film starring Reese Witherspoon, which is partly how it's so well known. But Cheryl Strayed is a really phenomenal writer, which isn't always the case to have such great writing in adventure storytelling because it's often about the story but wild is a really powerful story of overcoming adversity so in the story Cheryl Strayed tells the story of overcoming grief after the death of her mother a traumatic childhood overcoming heroin addiction and then going on to hike the pacific crest trail which is kind of a healing journey for her but over the course of the book she finds her rhythm and makes so many friends along the way the narrative moves back and forth in time between the present day of her hiking the trail and then the past with her childhood and her addiction issues. And it's a really powerful, sad, beautiful, well-written story. Ultimately, it's a super empowering and inspiring story about hope. And it will leave you as the reader wanting to go on your own adventure. A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson. As far as I can remember, A Walk in the Woods by Bill Bryson is the first adventure memoir I ever read when I was about 18. And for me, it inspired me to go on my own adventure, hiking a section of the Kungsleden in Northern Arctic, Sweden. Bill Bryson is one of the most well-known travel writers out there. And A Walk in the Woods is humorous, it's inspiring, it's engaging, and it's full of dry, self-deprecating humor, which makes it really relatable to someone who's never done a multi-day hike before, but would really like to. I don't know if I'd have a different perspective on this book now if I'd read it now that I've read lots of other adventure memoirs but at the time it was I would say it was a life-changing book it really gave me a taste for what it was like to get out of your comfort zone and go on an adventure and it was the book that made me do just that it was a long time ago I read it but from what I recall it had a really good balance of adventure storytelling and ecology and the wildlife and the humans of the trail and then just being a really witty travelogue Solo by Jenny Tuff Solo by Jenny Tuff was a really wonderful read and I had the added bonus of listening to it on audiobook while I was running my first ultra marathon. In the book, Jenny Tuff shares her experiences of running across six mountain ranges on six continents and doing it as a solo woman in some incredibly remote places. The book shows her endurance and her athletic prowess, but above all, it's a story of how much misogyny there is in society. Everywhere she goes, she meets people who are either bemused by the fact that she's a solo female adventurer or sometimes they just downright don't believe she's doing what she's doing. Tuff shares quite a lot of her inner world during the book and for me it was a book with a really good balance of sharing that inner landscape and the, the challenges and the emotions of going through something like that as well as sharing the run and the tangible adventure and the beautiful landscapes she's crossing and the people she's meeting along the way. The Salt Path by Raynor Wynne the Salt Path by Raynor Wynne is what I think of as a magic book. It was one I couldn't put down and couldn't stop thinking about when I finished it. It's the story of the author and her husband Moth, who through no fault of their own get made homeless in a really terrible and tragic situation. And when they have nowhere to go, they decide instead of finding a new home because that's proving impossible, they're gonna hike the Southwest Coast Path in Southwest England. They have the added challenge in doing this in that Moth, the husband, has a neurodegenerative disease that's how, like making him lose mobility. Um, but actually what they discover is once they're walking every day, his symptoms are a little bit better and they find that just by keeping walking, things are getting better and better. The story is full of trail magic and little coincidences that every through hiker will have experienced and it just filled me with so much warmth and I love the way Raina Wynn writes, you really feel like you're getting inside her head. 
There are two sequels to The Salt Path called The Wild Silence and Landlines following their journey after the Southwest Coast Path. And they're great books. I really enjoyed them. Same level of great writing, interesting observations, insights. But for me, they didn't have quite the same level of magic as The Salt Path, which was just, just blew me away. Three Stripes South by Bex Band. Three Stripes South is Bex Band's memoir of through hiking the Israel National Trail. When I read it, I knew hiking the Israel National Trail was on the cards for me at some point, so that added a whole level of inspiration to me reading it. In the book, Bex Band tells the story of how she was just, well, perceived herself as an ordinary person from Basingstoke, but she realised she wanted more from life. She and her husband quit their jobs, um, got rid of their flat in London and decided they were going to through hike across Israel a thousand kilometres through mountains, desert, forests, beaches, cities and cross the Holy Land. Throughout the journey she undergoes quite a personal transformation as she understands that feeling of freedom and wanting more from life and she and her husband make some radical changes in their life so that it'll never be the same again and they'll continue getting to live adventurously. The book's full of witty anecdotes, interesting look backs at her childhood which was really challenging um, and interesting insights in the Israeli culture and hiking and it's just a really inspiring book that will leave you wanting to get out there and make your dreams happen. Mud Rocks Blazers by Heather Anderson. The next book is Mud Rocks Blazers by Heather Anderson, who goes by the name of Anish. In the book, she's setting out for a fastest known time of the Appalachian Trail, which was a feat she'd covered before on the Pacific Crest Trail um, a few years earlier. I haven't read her first book, which is about that Pacific Crest Trail hike, but Mud Rocks and Blazers focuses on the Appalachian Trail and her trying to do this fastest known time, but she's absolutely riddled with doubt and feels like her previous record was a fluke. And it's just, shares a lot about her inner world and her complete lack of self-esteem going through this absolutely epic adventure. She shares her journey really intimately and the writing goes very deep into her personal insights and inner world. She explores the struggles that every through hiker has from not having enough food and working out how you're going to get food um, to weather and wildlife and the people you meet. Um, but she has this added thing of this huge, huge self-doubt and self-deprecating nature and that makes it really hard to read at times but really a kind of a privilege to look inside her head in that way. Adding to all that, the fact that she's trying to cover 40 plus miles a day to reach this record and yeah, all that overthinking. And it's all a real struggle, but ends up being a real book of hope and ultimately joy. Coasting by Elise Downing. Elise Downing was the first woman and the youngest person to run around the perimeter of Great Britain, um, a huge feat which she achieved at the age of only 23. Although she wrote the book when she was a bit older, it very much reads as a story of a 23-year-old being wildly unprepared, um, making a lot of poor decisions, really struggling, but ultimately you're really um, brought into her world. Her story is full of tears and mishaps and phone calls home to her dad. But amidst all the emotion and the chaos, she's really doing something extraordinary. It can be a little bit cringy to read the book as a 30-something, but for me that was just because her 23-year-old self was so recognisable as my 23-year-old self and the mistakes she's making and the, the kind of situation she's getting into, which some of them are pretty horrible, but kind of so relatable for people who've struggled growing up through their 20s, making poor decisions. Despite all of that, she comes across as hugely likeable and relatable, and I was rooting for her the whole way. To Shake the Sleeping Self by Jedediah Jenkins. To Shake the Sleeping Self by Jedediah Jenkins is a memoir that for me absolutely has it all. It has deeply sensitive, intuitive, reflective writing, um, but ultimately a really great story as well. The author quits his job and decides to cycle from Oregon to Patagonia, and it shares his journey along the way, the magical people he meets, but a lot about his inner world, which as you might have guessed by what I've shared in this video is a huge thing for me when I'm reading adventure memoirs. It's a story where his inner journey is even more powerful than the tangible journey that's happening. And as he, as he goes along, he starts to discover things about his sexuality that have been repressed because he, he grew up in a really strict Christian environment where he hadn't been able to fully explore himself. So it's a real story of self-discovery and coming into his true self. Throughout the journey, he keeps asking the question, what is it that makes life worth living? And there's a lot of profoundness in his writing. 
for me, it was such a deeply compelling book and one I'd recommend to everyone. The Pants of Perspective by Anna McNuff. Anna McNuff has a few adventure memoirs out and is a prolific adventurer in the UK, but the one I read and enjoyed was Pants of Perspective, which follows her journey trail running across Te Araroa, which is the 3,000 kilometre trail that spans the length of New Zealand across the North and South Island. Te Araroa is our trail that's really high on my wish list, probably to hike rather than to run. So when I was reading this book, it really drew me in and really inspired me to kind of start thinking about that trail and getting me in the, in the space of what it's like to be doing that. I loved hearing her descriptions of the landscapes and the mountain huts and, and the connections formed in those mountain huts and the river crossings and all the New Zealand stuff. Her journey and her storytelling are peppered with meetings of um, trail angels and other hikers and that's really what brings the story to life is those fortuitous meetings and interactions with really special people and kind of characters you end up really connecting with. This was also a book that made me realise that a really long run of that kind of scale might not be so scary because she does this run 3,000 kilometres across New Zealand but she's going at the same pace somebody might be hiking, she's covering similar distances in a day and it made me realise yeah running doesn't have to be big and scary and kind of FKTs and it, it can just be going out and enjoying the trails for a few hours a day and and covering what you cover and being okay with that and that was really exciting and inspiring for me to start dreaming about maybe a long distance run one day. The book's really a celebration of enjoying the journey and whatever unfolds along the way. Into the Wild by John Krakauer into the Wild by John Krakauer tells the story of Chris McCandles, who was a young man who gave away his inheritance uh, when he finished college. I think he dropped out of everything, dropped out of his job, and he decided to travel across America with basically no money, working along the way to get there, to get to Alaska, where he was going to live off the land. It's a pretty devastating story that's pieced together from his diaries, Chris McCandle's diaries, and there's a phenomenal film um, of this book as well. But the thing that really spoke to me about th this book and his journey was how he connected with the land and how deeply intertwined his psyche was with the land and that nature connection which I found so powerful. It definitely was a story of things going wrong and needing to know what you're doing when you're interacting with the land. Um, but it reminded me of how powerful this earth is and how much it has to offer us. It also inspired a lot of thinking around what it means to live up to society's expectations and what it means to step away from that and live a life that feels more authentic to who you are. Dare to Do by Sarah Alton. Sarah Alton's adventure is one of the adventures that I am most in awe of and Dare to Do, her book, talks about this. So her goal was to circumnavigate the whole globe only using human power. So she cycles, she kayaks, and she rows across oceans. So this is a long-term adventure. It's clear from the writing just how incredibly driven she is and what a special, unique person she is to be taking on an adventure like this. The thing is, a year into her adventure, a disaster struck and she got caught in her rowing boat in a tropical storm her boat broke it was very traumatic she had to be rescued she took some time out of the adventure and her mental and physical health really deteriorated but she didn't give up she got back out there she completed the adventure later and finished what she intended to do this for me is really a story of perseverance and overcoming obstacles when you've got a goal and really going for it. And I, I just found it so inspiring. I've seen Sarah speak as well. And yeah, she, she's a bit of a hero to me. So those are the books that I've chosen for today. There are so many more out there and I would love to hear from you in the comments what your favorite adventure memoirs are and if you want to recommend any to me and maybe I can make another video like this further down the line. I'd also love to hear if you've read any of these books and if you agree with me on them making the list and yeah, generally what you thought of them. But that is all today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.